Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital Today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Valentin reveals his relationship with Pikeman, and Sasha has a hallucination before Cody's visit with her goes wrong. Sasha hallucinates Cody and Cyrus before BL Key gets her and Cody in to visit Sasha, giving Anna another piece of the jigsaw. Cody has the accusations against Sasha dismissed and tries to lie his way into seeing her, while Anna believes Valentine is at the heart of the Pikeman transaction. Valentine arrives at Anna's and she inquires about who shot at her. That was hardly the greeting he had anticipated. How could he possibly know? She inquires as to the significance of the message he had her deliver to Sonny. She claims Sonny has been nice recently, but it doesn't change the fact that he runs a criminal enterprise. It makes her question why he's messaging the guy. Valentine apologizes. He had no choice except to assist Laura in Russia. Anna understands his aim was to find Nicholas, but she finds the timing intriguing. They were shot at while she was delivering his message at the Metro Court pool. She realizes there must be a connection and inquires if he is concealing anything from her. He was supposed to contact Sonny on someone else's behalf. He assumed it would be the end of his involvement. Anna inquires as to how he obtained the information, but he declines to answer. Anna is speechless. He says he loves her. She is looking for answers. A defense contractor called Pikeman, he reveals. He's no longer with them, although he used to handle logistics for an independent company that worked on a few projects with Pikeman. He didn't tell her since he has a lot of balls in the air. Pikeman enjoys his work and is aware that he knows Sonny. Anna isn't convinced. There's got to be more, he sighs. She inquires as to what he was thinking. Valentin claims that this occurred while Anna was being framed. He believed Pikeman could assist in bringing Victor down because they had both commented to the WSB. Anna is taken aback. She believes the WSB and Pikeman are responsible for the shooting. I was the intended target, and I refused to be a sitting duck. She requests that he tell her everything before they take another shot, but he has already told her everything. It saddens him to think he endangered her. She sets out to find the missing component. Martin pays a visit to Cyrus in the hospital, where he finds that he has donated all of his money to the Rodden Institute to help stop recidivism. Cyrus is overjoyed that many lives would be spared as a result of it. What about your personal life? Martin inquires. The love of money, according to Cyrus, is the basis of all evil. Martin remains convinced that there is something in it for him. Austin stands outside, watching as the men disagree about who Cyrus is. Martin refers to him as poor, yet he recognizes him as his brother. Men like him keep money hidden. He is concerned about his returning to Pentonville and acknowledges that their mother frequent inquires about him. Cyrus isn't sure she cares. I have a client to see, Martin says. What about a horse? Cyrus inquires. They laugh, and Martin goes to see how his brother is doing. Finn describes him as a tough cookie and assures him not to worry. Martin leaves, and Mason texts him soon away to meet him at his office. Austin runs into his cousin in his workplace, and they start chatting about Sonny and Betty, and Austin hopes he doesn't treat her like he treated Gordon. Mason inquires whether he thought he shot him, and argues the man was not worth his time. He believes the cops will come for him, because they learned he was chatting to Gordon outside the restaurant. When they quarrel over respect, Austin orders him to go away. Sasha awakens in her Fancliff bed, relieved to see Cody. She asks if he's okay when he slams the door. He wonders how he's meant to be okay after she attempted to murder him. He yells in her face and points, leaving her to wonder what he was thinking. He transforms into Cyrus, who claims she is nothing more than an addict who will die in an alley. He dangles coke in front of her, and she begs him to leave her alone. Cyrus claims she requires him and that no one else wants her. She sobs as she slides down the wall. He changes into Cody after calling her a sad psychopath. She informs him that she mistook him for Cyrus. 
He yells at her to turn around and look at him. He has a knife in his side and blood is oozing from it. No, she yells. Suddenly he's gone, leaving her alone and wailing. Finn approaches Liz at the hub and flirts with her awkwardly. He was considering leaving General Hospital, but has since changed his mind. She's relieved. Gregory appears and eavesdrops on their conversation as they flirt. Finn sees his father and is surprised that he is considering leaving. Liz admits she finds him appealing, and they make fun of his bedside style. The males laugh as she walks away. Gregory is pleased that they are getting along and explains he is there for research. Finn needs to see a patient. Tracy searches for her son, the wandering warbler, at the Kew Mansion. She figures he's sleeping because he partied all night. Tracy is exhausted and believes Ned should be sent to a mental institution. She's not sure if that's the best course of action. Nettie overhears Tracy say, This isn't one flew over the cuckoo's nest. She needs to know whether he's acting or not. Olivia claims she is the only one legally permitted to do so. Tracy advises doing it as soon as possible. They dispute about whether he needs treatment, and Olivia refuses to commit him, even if he has to go by the name Eddie Main for the rest of his life. Tracy walks away, mumbling, we'll see, and Neddy appears. He thanks her for standing up for him and refers to that woman as a bully. Olivia wants him to seek assistance, but not on Tracy's terms. The basic line, according to Neddy, is that he is not Ned. Nothing is going to change that. There's a lot of evidence that he's Ned, according to her. He informs her that he is nothing without music. She advises that he and his daughter Brooke Lynn collaborate on music. Then he can have his family while also becoming Eddie. She tells him about BLQ's music and how she can write for him before offering to listen to him perform. He sings a little, and she looks at him fondly. She returns to an empty room after going to get them iced tea. Tracy arrives at GH and runs into Gregory. She says she was concerned about him because he was unable to pick up his credit card. She inquires whether something is wrong. He doesn't appreciate how she's interrogating him and accusing her of discussing him with Alexis. Finn has mold for Jake's project nearby. He cultivated samples for him in his lab and claims the spores are good. Finn makes fun of his fungal obsession, and they listen in on his father and Tracy's dispute. She is perplexed as to what he'd done to deserve Tracy's wrath. They all believe she's an acquired taste, but his father enjoys a good debate and can hold his own. They debate over it, and Gregory defends Neddy, believing that his independence is important. Tracy sneers that she didn't request a lecture. BLQ and Cody infiltrate Ferncliff, while BLQ meets Nurse Janice and expresses his fondness for the name, January she adored the Brady Bunch and wonders whether anyone ever addressed her as January. She starts talking about cosmetics before handing over her ID. Janice is ecstatic since she works alongside Blaze and Chase. BLQ takes advantage of the woman's interest in her. She allows her to listen to their new single through headphones and Cody makes a break for it while Janice's eyes are closed. Cody walks into Sasha's room, and she stares at him, tears streaming down her cheeks and mascara smudged under her eyes. Outside, BLQ is with Ronald and Nurse Janice, and he informs her that he will oversee the visit. It's the doctor's order. Anxious, Brooklyn follows him, while inside her room, Sasha starts screaming at Cody, and he tries to soothe her to no avail. Ronald jumps in and orders Cody and Brooklyn to leave. Cyrus is shackled to a wheelchair and escorted to the elevator by two guards. They're all set to return him to Statesville. He gives Austin a knowing grin, and they lock eyes. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.